Okay, so we're going to focus on statement of cash flows here for chapter 12. And let me go ahead and just put this up on uh, slideshow here. Okay, now I think our first thing should be to understand well, what is a statement of cash flows? I mean, what's it all about? By the way, don't be daunted by this. You see this 13 1. I'm using this from a different text in which it's chapter 13. We're obviously in chapter 12 now, right? Okay, so this is chapter 12. I'll put chapter 12 up here. And when we talk about the statement of cash flows, we are basically adding a fourth statement to the ones that we've talked about already. We had a balance sheet. We had an income statement, haven't we? Which one do you like better, the income statement or the balance sheet? Why? Okay, good. That's as good as answer as any. Okay. And then we have what? We have our statement of retained earnings. Right? That one was pretty easy too, though. Beginning balance of retained earnings plus the net income minus the dividends. Ending balance, that's probably even easier than the income statement. Huh? Minus sales discounts on the statement of retained earnings. The income statement is jealous. Here you say, you said you loved, you, you said to the income statement, but you said you loved me. And then you start talking about things that the income statement has. The statement of retained earnings doesn't have those things. Okay. Statement of retained earnings has sales minus sales discounts. Minus sales returns gives me what? Net sales. Minus my cost of goods sold gives me my gross profit. Minus my operating expenses gives me operating income. Minus my non-operating items like interest and gains and losses on the sale of my um, equipment, etc. gives me net income, right? Statement of retained earnings is simply my beginning balance of my retained earnings plus, and we just pick up that net income number and add it, minus any dividends gives me the ending balances in my retained earnings, right? And the balance sheet is assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equities. Let's put the phones away, guys. you got to focus here. This is not going to be easy, this statement of cash flows. Okay, so then what? Then we have our statement of cash flows. And statement of cash flows now is a fourth statement. Okay. Now, what's interesting about the statement of cash flows, unlike the other statements, well, I guess statement of retained earnings is similar to statement of cash flows in this regard, but unlike the balance sheet and the income statement, where we have to sit there and uh, do journal entries to get any numbers uh, to show up on our balance sheet and our income statement, remember I always say accountants do it with journal entries? Right? If anything's going to appear on the financial statements, there has to be a debit and a credit, right? But for the statement of cash flows, what we do is we basically analyze the income statement, analyze the balance sheet, and that ends up yielding what we report on our statement of cash flows. So we literally take the two statements that we've already prepared and we analyze those two statements to prepare a statement called the statement of cash flows. Now, if the statement of cash flows is simply pulling information off of those other two and reporting it in a format in a different statement, then why do we need it? Well, what the statement of cash flows does is give us a clear picture of these uh, objectives that you see up here on the screen, which is giving us a picture of the entity's ability to generate future cash flows, the entity's ability to pay dividends and meet their obligations. Why would you be interested if a company could pay dividends or not? What do you care? Maybe you're buying the stock and this is an income stock for you as an investor and you're looking for a dividend, right? If it's what? Looking at their ability to meet obligations, maybe you're holding that stock for some sort of value increase over time. And if the company's going to be going bankrupt soon, then that stock doesn't have much value uh, left in it, right? Okay. Um, it's going to also show the reason for the difference between net income and net cash provided by operating activities. And guys, this is where we're going to focus most of our attention. Okay? 
in terms of how we're going to see that the statement of cash flows does that for us. Okay, and then we'll also see very explicitly any cash that was spent on investments, like if we invested in property, plan, or equipment for the period, and any cash that was generated by or used by financing activities. For example, if we borrowed money, cash came in from a financing activity that borrowing. Okay, so these last uh, few where I put the stars are really the things that we're going to be focusing on. But you should be keeping in the back of your mind that these other couple of things up here uh, are also objectives of the statement of cash flows. Okay, okay, good. So let's go ahead and let's just see how that's all going to work. And uh, of course, I always have to grab the wrong clicker first. I always got to undo my little. in this mess somewhere but let me just try to change out the other thing and we'll see where we land later when I look for that okay so let's just go ahead and uh, go through an example here statement of cash flows that uh, I'm going to put on these slides and I'm doing them up here rather than on the board so that uh, later on you can watch this on the screen okay and uh, let's say that uh, a company has revenue we provide a service and we provide that service on credit what's the journal entry for that yes sir I provided the service. I've already provided the service. I provide the service on credit, so it's not under. Huh? Good. Very good. I'm going to debit accounts receivable. What's your name, sir? Andrew. I'm going to debit accounts receivable for, say, and I'm going to keep the numbers fairly small. Let's say $7,000. Okay with you? Okay, good. And I'm going to credit what? Good. Revenue. We'll just call it revenue. Okay. For seven thousand dollars, good. Okay. All right, good. So uh, now I have to pay some bills, let's say, right? Or not pay some bills, but I need some supplies. Uh, let's not make it supplies. Let's make it. Uh, I have to have someone come in provide me a service, cleaning services in my office or something, right? And rather than pay the person cash, I say, hey, just bill me and I'll pay you in 60 days, let's say, right? So uh, if I've already incurred that expense, what journal entry do I have to make? I have to, when I ask for a journal entry, you should give it to me in order of debits and credits. So you should say, what journal entry do I have to make? You should say debit and credit. So you want me to debit the expenses, Andrew? Okay, debit the expenses. And let's say that cost me, uh, I don't know, we'll say it cost me 4000 bucks, okay? And what do you want me to credit? Credit the accounts payable now for 4000 right? Okay. And let's say that this company just began operations. This is year one of operations. And those are the only two transactions that happened for this year, okay? Can you prepare me the income statement okay let's do the income statement income statement is going to show what revenue of seven thousand right good then what expenses of four thousand good Right, and uh, do I have a net income here then? Huh? Net income is going to be what? Three thousand dollars. Okay, good. Got that income statement done. Got everyone's favorite statement done first. Okay. How about the balance sheet? Eight 
assets. Do I have any assets? I got accounts receivable. Good for what? Seven thousand. Okay. Any other balance sheet items? Huh? I have a liability of accounts payable. Good for what? Four thousand. Guys, I don't need to make closing entries here, do I? Do I need to show you the closing entries? As to how we're going to end up with our retained earnings? No? Okay, I'm going to skip the closing entries. You know then that I would close out my revenues to my income statement, my expenses to my income statement, my income summary to what? To my retained earnings, right? And retained earnings would end up being what? 3000 here? And the balance sheet balances, right? Okay, so we've got an income statement, we got a balance sheet, don't we? But now we're going to learn about what? About the, and I'm not going to do a statement of retained earnings, okay? Be beginning balance, which was zero, plus net income, which is 7,000, ending balance 7,000. But let's look at our statement of cash flows now. Okay, and remember, we're going to pull things off of these other statements to figure out what our statement of cash flow should look like, right? Okay, and so we're going to start out with net uh, net income. Net income is how much here? Three thousand on my statement of cash flows, and then I'm going to reconcile to and let's start with cash. provided by operations is what I'm going to reconcile to. And I simply ask you, has uh, there been any cash provided? No cash has been provided. So I can just sort of eyeball the answer right here is what? Zero, isn't it? Now, in the real statement of cash flow we were preparing it we wouldn't know that answer until we finished it but i'm putting the answer down here just so you can see that we're basically trying to explain how we went from an accrual number of net income of 3000 to what we know just because we're able to watch you know eyeball this thing easily that we ended up with zero cash being provided by operations right did any cash get provided okay so what we would do is we would analyze the balance sheet Okay, and we would look at now the balance sheet is our next step. And our beginning account receivable was how much? No, beginning was zero, ending was seven, right? Okay, our beginning account payable was what? Zero, ending was 4,000, right? So we have the beginning, we have the ending balance. So we had an increase in our account receivable, 7,000, didn't we? Accounts receivable increased, which increased our net income, didn't it? The increase in account receivable, but no cash was provided, right? So since our account receivable increased, but no cash was provided, we would literally put on our statement of cash flows, increase in AR. We would call out the increase in AR, but we would subtract that increase in AR from our net income because what? That increased our income, but what? It, our net income, but it didn't provide any cash, right? So we would subtract that, okay? Then what? Then we would analyze our liability here, and what happens? Our liability increased, didn't it? Accounts payable increased. Accounts payable decreased our net income, but uh, the, the increase in accounts payable decreased our net income, but no cash was used, right? So what would we do? Since our accounts receivable increased, we'd put increase in accounts receivable. I mean payable, excuse me. 
increase in accounts payable. Thank you. And we would do what? We would add it because it decreased my net income, but it didn't use any cash, did it? And so this statement of cash flows works, doesn't it? It shows my net income, which I took off the income statement. I analyzed the balance sheet, and I was able to figure out that my what? My increase or my cash provided by operations was zero, which you're saying, well, I knew that already, John. Yeah, but it's not always that abundantly clear, right? Uh, because you just have two transactions that you're dealing with, right? Okay, so we just, guys, prepared a statement of cash flows for year one. Isn't this beautiful? Okay, we're done with year one. Ready for year two? Okay, so let's go ahead. And uh, what color do we use for, use for year two? Blue for year two. Get it? See how that rhymes? Even getting rhymes here now. Okay, so it's blue for year two now, right? Blue for year two? And so what happens? In year two, let's say we actually start to collect some cash on these, okay? So we go ahead and we get some cash for our account receivable. So we debit cash. I should be asking you this. We debit cash for 5000 because we collected cash. What do we credit? We collected cash on the account receivable? Credit the accounts receivable for 5000 right? Okay, good. Now we got to pay some of these payables, and let's say we pay $1,000 on these payables. So what do we debit? Good. Accounts payable gets debited for 1000 and we credit cash for 1000 right? a thousand okay good okay so uh, we've got what we got four thousand dollars cash now in our pocket okay let's say that we go ahead and we decide to invest in some equipment so we buy equipment that's worth uh, I don't know Three thousand dollars. We buy equipment that's worth three thousand dollars. So if we buy equipment that's worth three thousand dollars, we're going to do what? Debit equipment for three thousand and credit uh, cash for three thousand. It's going to start that now. Credit cash for three thousand. Okay, okay, good. So uh, let's see. I think I can squeeze in my balance sheet for year two if I just move over this cash provided by operations a little bit. For year one statement of cash flows. back to red so that we stay with red I'll just move it over here a little bit right cash provided by ops cash provided by ops is zero isn't it I don't know why I wrote a bracket around the four. There's no bracket there. That's an ad, isn't it? Okay. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to do my balance sheet for uh, year two right here, right next to my balance sheet for year one. Huh? Oh, okay. better okay okay so my accounts receivable now in year two is going to be how much I don't have to tee these up do I guys if we started the year with seven and we just credit for five it's two thousand now right 
Okay, so accounts receivable for year two is 2,000. Just putting the new account balances next to the next to next to uh, the year one. Okay, and uh, how about accounts payable now? Accounts payable is now 3,000. Oh, I forgot something though. I have cash now, don't I? How much is my cash? This ain't going to work quite the way I thought it was going to. Um, let's do it like this. That erased amazingly beautifully that I didn't get any of the accounts receivable in there. So I'm going to put cash right here. How much cash do I have? The cash is a thousand. Write that there, and I am going to get rid of your two up here. Man, I'm a mean man with this eraser today. Look at that. Just erasing only what I want to. So that's year two. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to squeeze in the equipment here. The equipment is worth how much now? 3000 Okay, good. And then um, I have accounts payable of how much now? Accounts payable is 3000 And my retained earnings is how much? Still 3000 good, right? Because I've got what? My balance sheet balances 1000 of cash, 2000 accounts receivables, 3000 3000 equipment, that's 6000 Accounts payable plus my retained earnings is 6000 So the balance sheet balances, right? Right? Okay, good. You sure? Okay. Okay, so that gives me my year two balance sheet, guys. I guess I might as well. I'll go ahead. I'll squeeze in my year two um, income statement, but it's somewhat of a waste of time, isn't it? Why is it a waste of time? Revenue is how much? On what planet is revenue 3000 in year two? Revenue is zero in year two. No imagination allowed in here. Nothing happened in my revenue and my expense accounts, and I close them out to zero at the end of the year, right? No. Huh? No. Yes, I do. I close out my revenue and expense accounts to zero at the end of year one, and there's year still two, no nothing happened, so there's still year two. There's still zero in year two, right? Because nothing happened there? Okay. This is not sleepy time. I mean, this isn't where we came to find uh, refuge from the cold and take a nap. So, you know. Don't be sitting there, you know, kind of hugging your imaginary te teddy bear saying, oh, let me just, you know, go into a little bit of a coma here. Because I promise you, you will not be able to do these questions if you're not following what I'm doing up here. Okay, so revenue is what? Zero. Expenses is? Huh? Expenses are? Zero. Nothing happened in my expense account, right? Nothing happened in the expense account. Why would it not be zero? Equipment is not an expense. Equipment is an asset that I put on my balance sheet. Expenses are reported on the income statement, right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, and I'm going to assume that I bought that equipment on December 31st at 11.59. So it has not depreciated. No, it does not. Equipment is equipment, guys. Come on. We purchase equipment. It shows up on the balance sheet. Balance sheet are assets. They have future economic benefit. This equipment has a three-year life. It's an asset that shows up on the balance sheet, right? It's not an expense. So revenue is zero. Expenses are zero. Therefore, my net income is how much? Net income is zero. That's why I was saying income statement was a waste of time, but I guess it wasn't since we had some misunderstandings about what goes on the income statement. And so 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my statement of cash flows for year two now. What's my net income for year two? Net income for year two is zero. Good. Okay. Then what? Then I'm sitting here and my accounts receivable did what? And if you look at the balance sheet, it decreased 5000 didn't it? From year one to year two? Didn't it decrease 2000 it was what? It was 7,000 in year. Where'd my balance sheet go? It was. Where is my balance sheet? Is up top. It, this is, would be the bottom. That's the top. <laughs> okay. The balance sheet was 7,000 in year one at the end. It is now what? 2,000, didn't it? Isn't it? So it did what? It decreased 5,000, right? So I'm going to put that decrease 5,000. And it decreased 5,000, decrease in accounts receivable is what I'm putting in here. Decrease in accounts receivable. It decreased 5,000, didn't it? It decreased 5,000, but what? It didn't create any net income, but it did increase the cash, didn't it? And remember, I'm trying to get to cash provided by operations here. And so what do I do? I go ahead and I add that 5,000 back because even though it didn't increase net income, it did provide cash, didn't it? The decrease in accounts receivable. Okay. Then I go ahead and I analyze, and I'm just going to deal with my current items first. So let's analyze accounts payable then. Equipment is a long-term item, isn't it? So I always analyze my current items first here. And I go ahead and I analyze my accounts payable. Accounts payable did what? It decreased by $1,000. And so I'll put decrease. in accounts payable this time and what happened even though the decrease in the account payable the paying of an expense that I had in another year did what De didn't uh, affect my net income it did decrease my cash didn't it okay so what am I gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subtract out a thousand here good with me so far Okay, so my cash provided by operations my cash provided by operations here is now going to be what uh, four thousand dollars? With me so far? Cash provided by operations is 4000 right? But remember, we said that one of the objectives of the statement of cash flows is to show money that you've invested for the period. Didn't we invest in some equipment this period? We made an investment in equipment. So we'll have another section here called investing. And we'll show in this investing section purchase of equipment. Did I purchase some equipment this period? Yes. And I purchased this equipment for what? Three thousand dollars? And I used cash for that, didn't I? For that a purchase, so I have to subtract that, don't I? Okay, and so when I report my what decrease in cash for the period, guys, if you can't see when you sit in the back, why do you? I see people sitting in back going, meanwhile, there's 52 seats in the front. Come on in, the water's fine. Don't sit way back there and then you can't see. Okay, so what happens? Decrease in cash for the period. 
and the decrease in cash for the period is what? Is, let's see, I mean, X is actually not a decrease, it's what? It's an increase in cash. I don't know why I'm calling it a decrease. It's an increase in cash. My cash went from what? Zero. From zero, and I now have what? I now have a thousand dollars of cash, and so my increase in cash for the period is a thousand dollars, isn't it? And this little statement of cash flows that we just uh, provided here explained how cash went from what? from zero to a thousand dollars we're sitting there and saying okay my net income for the period was zero so nothing got provided by revenues or expenses this period or got used by expenses however i did collect on some receivables from a prior year didn't i and i did have to pay off some bills that i incurred from prior year's expenses and then i did do what invest in some equipment right and you can see all that right here on the statement of cash flows. Now, it's much easier to follow when it's just one transaction. But essentially, you would be able to see everything that happened to that company this year and see how all the different categories of things that affected the company this year hit uh, affected cash, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Say what? No, I got $1,000 of cash because I got $5,000 of cash in account receivable I collected. I paid a bill of $1,000. That left me with what? That left me with uh, $4,000 of cash. And then I went ahead and I bought some equipment for $3,000. I ended up with $1,000 cash. Right? Yes, sir. Uh, when you were calculating that now, how come you took uh, cash provided by uh, I didn't skip it. I had net income was zero. I had the decrease in accounts receivable, which I added. I decreased my cash for a thousand with the accounts payable, and my cash provided by operations is four thousand. What did I skip? It's right here, right? Okay, so cash provided by operations is four thousand, and then I use three thousand cash for investing, right, in equipment. So that was a subtract of three thousand, and I ended up with a thousand dollars cash, didn't I? Right. The decreases and increases in my current items is going to end up being what goes into cash provided by operations. And I'm going to give you a mnemonic so you can remember everything that goes in that category here in a little while. But right now, yes. Question over here, you wall huggers? <laughs> We're okay over here? You guys okay back there? They put you in charge of watching that electric thing to make sure no one opens and closes it unauthorized, right? Okay. If you guys don't pay attention over here, I'm going to turn the rats loose. I heard them in the, I was in the trailer FP21. I hear them scratching around. It's creepy when you're in there by yourself and you hear the rats. <laughs> They're going, teach us accounting. <laughs> Did you have a question, sir? Yeah, so SCF, is, for, uh, SCF statement. is statement of cash flows, yes. And I have a statement of cash flows for red is year one, blue is year two. And this is my statement of cash flows right here for year two. With me so far? Yeah, I'm, we're recording right now, and I'll put this on Canvas. So it's the only way that you would have, so you sell the equipment that would go back to your cash flow. Stay on the range, cowboy. We're not there yet. You subtract if there's no cash provided. 
I said that my accounts receivable decreased and I added it because it didn't affect my net income to collect cash on account receivable, but it did increase cash, didn't it? And I'm trying to get to the cash provided by operations. Okay, so I added it. For the accounts payable, what happened? I used cash up, but there was no effect on my net income, right? So I subtracted that because I simply paid an account payable. Right? If it increased, I would have added it. If it decreased, I subtract it. I add it when it uh, increases because what? I had an expense, but no cash got used, right? It's the opposite for accounts receivable. With accounts receivable, I had what? I had a increase in my sales when my accounts receivable increased, but no cash was provided, right? So I subtracted it. I did the opposite. When I what collected cash on my accounts receivable, but it didn't generate any income, I went ahead and I added it, right? So it was the opposite for accounts receivable. That's correct. Okay. Can I go to year three now? Can I go to year three? Okay. We're going to go to year three now. And I'm just going to have to flip over to another page. Otherwise, this is just going to get unruly up here. Okay, so what happens? I go to year three, and I'm going to flip back and forth, guys, so that we can see, because I don't want to have to rewrite year uh, two over here. But let's just go back and forth. Um, and how about black for year three? So year three now, I borrow some money because I'm getting a little short in cash now, right? So I decide I'm going to borrow $12,000. So when I borrow $12,000, I'm going to debit cash $12,000. And I'm going to credit what? Good, no payable for $12,000. I'm going to take on a liability here, right? Now, I'm borrowing this money on 12:31 at 11:59 p.m. because I don't want to deal with accruing any interest, okay, in this example. So I'm just borrowing this money at 11:59. I'm not going to accrue any interest on it, okay? And so I get that cash in, that 12,000. Should there be any other journal entry I should make at this point for this year? This is the only thing that happened. I borrowed money. Did time pass this year? Did time pass between year two and year three? Yes, it did, unless we're in some sort of weird Twilight Zone episode. So time did pass, right? When time passes, do we record certain expenses? Like what? We have that piece of equipment that depreciated, don't we? That piece of equipment depreciated. We paid 3000 for it, and I said it had a three-year life. And so now one year has passed, and so we're going to, what's the journal entry for depreciation? Good. Debit depreciation expense for 3000 and credit what? Credit accumulated depreciation for 3000 Good. With me so far? I mean, sorry, not 3000 Thank you. 1000 Just one year. So it's 1,000, right? Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so that's the only journal entries we made this year for these two things that happened, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prepare my income statement. Income statement shows what? Shows revenue of... How much is my revenue? Zero. Shows expenses of how much? Expenses of a thousand. And shows um, 
a loss, thank you, of a thousand, right? Right? Let's do the balance sheet just to kind of keep ourselves in tune with what's going on here. So my cash is how much? Cash is still that, what was it at the end of last year? A thousand? Cash is still a thousand. Accounts receivable are still what? Still 2,000. Good. Thanks, guys. I appreciate this, that you're helping me remember those numbers. The equipment is how much? No. Well, equipment, let's do it right. Let's be pros about it. The equipment is what? 3,000. And the accumulated depreciation on that is what? 1,000. So the what? The book value or carrying value of that equipment is 2000 Us accountants are a little picky about things like that. I've got to do it right. So it's 2000 right? Okay. So my total assets here is what? Uh, cash, 1000 3000 6 so uh, 3 and 2 is 5000 total assets. Okay, good. And then I have my liabilities. My accounts payable is how much? Actually, I'll write the balance sheet on the, the liabilities on this side. What? The book value of the assets is 2000 3000 minus 1000 gives me a book value of an asset of 2000 right? Okay. And so I have my liabilities. My accounts payable is how much? Huh? Accounts payable still three thousand. Okay, good. And I have now a note payable for what? Oh, you're right. So cash should now be what? Thirteen thousand. Forgot about that. Cash should now be what? Thirteen thousand. Actually, I'm better off if I just do what erase that whole thing. Huh? Maybe not. I'm not better off. I don't know why I erased the whole thing. Why did I erase the whole thing? That's sort of like locking your keys in your car, right? As soon as you do it, you're like, oh, what did I just do? Of course, you can't lock your keys in your car anymore these days. But Okay, so what happens? Cash is how much? 13000 Accounts receivable is? 2000 equipment is 3000 with accumulated depreciation of 1000 and that gives me a book value of 2000 so my total assets here are what uh, 17000 okay thank you my liabilities are so far what 15000 and then when I report my retained earnings and my stockholders' equity, that's still what, 4000 I mean uh, 2000 Um, Something's not right here. Why is my retained earnings 2000 Retained earnings was 3000 wasn't it? Um. So retained earnings is now two thousand because what? Because I had a loss of a thousand dollars, didn't I? So since I had a loss of a thousand dollars, my retained earnings came down, right? Okay. So I have what? I have. Does my balance sheet bounce? Yes, it does, right? My liabilities plus my stockholders' equity also equals seventeen thousand, right? Okay, good. So now I'm ready to do my year three statement of cash flows, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll put my statement of cash flows right here where it looks like, ah, I'm going to put it right here. Statement of cash flows, we're into what now? Year three? Okay, good. What's my net income? Net income is how much? 
I have a negative net income of $1,000, don't I, loss? Okay, good. I analyze my current items and what? These uh, accounts payable, my current operating items, accounts payable, account receivable, nothing happened there, did it? Nothing happened there. So cash provided by operations. Oh, I made a mistake though. Um, what's happening? I do have one item I need to consider, which is what? I had that depreciation expense, didn't I? I have my depreciation expense. And when I took the depreciation expense, how much cash got used? Why would you say that $1,000 of cash got used for depreciation? When I made a journal entry where I debited depreciation expense and credited accumulated depreciation and no cash was involved at all. How much cash got used when I took the depreciation? Zero, right? Okay. Guys, stop guessing on things. Think through what you're doing. Don't jump to something that's in your head and then it makes absolutely no sense. Okay. That's how you make mistakes on your tests and stuff. Okay. So we had depreciation expense in which what? We took an expense, but it did what? It used absolutely no cash at all, did it? So what I need to do is I need to add back that depreciation of a thousand so that my cash provided by ops is zero, isn't it? My cash provided by operations is zero. Okay. Then I'm supposed to talk about my investing activities. Did I make any investments? What? What did I invest in this period? The note payable is somebody investing in me. Somebody's giving me this cash and saying, goodbye cash, do well. They're not sitting there and they're not, they're, I'm not investing in anybody. Someone's investing in me, aren't they? So there was no investing activity at all. That's zero. But I did go out and acquire financing. When you borrow money, we call that acquiring financing, don't we? So I have what? I have a new section that we're adding now, which is my financing activities. And for my financing activity, I have that no payable, don't I? And that increased my cash 12000 Okay. And so my ending cash, or I should say my changing cash, My change in cash is going to be what? Zero from operating, zero from investing. My cash change what? $12,000, didn't it? And we know it changed $12,000 because if you look at the one journal entry that affected cash for this period, we just had this debit to cash for $12,000, did not we? And now investors can look at my statement of cash flows for year three and say, okay, nothing was really cash was provided by operations. Even though you showed an operating loss, uh, that was caused by your depreciation, wasn't it? Okay. You didn't make any investments this period, but ah, most of that increase in cash came from borrowing money, didn't it? And you're able to tell that from the statement of cash flows. Okay. Okay, good. So now we can jump into year four. And when we get into year four now, we're going to use some of that money to buy inventory and to buy a couple of prepaid items. And we're going to sell that stupid equipment. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead 
and let's see what happens now. I'm going to buy some equipment. What color should I use for year four here? Green for year four? Okay. So we got year four now over here, and I'm going to use some of that cash to buy inventory. So I'm going to debit inventory. Oh, uh, huh? I'll debit inventory 3000 I don't know. doesn't matter. Credit cash. 3000 I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy some insurance. So I'm going to, and I'm going to buy this insurance, guys, at, um, huh? I'm going to buy the insurance at 1231 at 1159 because I don't want to have to accrue any uh, depreciation expense for the period. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, purchase uh, some prepaid insurance and I'm going to go ahead and debit what? Prepaid insurance. Actually, why don't I buy it on, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to buy it on uh, January 1st, a two-year policy for 1200 so I'm going to debit prepaid insurance for what? 1200 What? Two-year policy. 1200 And uh, uh, I'll make it 2400 Sorry, guys. Just so the numbers are easy. I don't want to deal with any weird numbers. 2400 And I'm going to credit cash for how much? 2400 because I just bought that insurance, right? I bought that on January 1st. Okay. And then I'm going to sell the equipment. I'm going to sell it on January 1st. And I'm going to sell it for $2,500. So when I go ahead and I sell that equipment for $2,500, I'll debit cash for what? $2,500. I'm going to... Credit the equipment account for how much? No, there's only three thousand. There's three thousand in the equipment account, right? I'm going to credit that, and I'm going to debit the accumulated depreciation for what? A thousand was sitting in there. So what that means is I must have sold that equipment for a gain, didn't I? Of five hundred dollars. Right, because it had a carrying value of 2000 and I just sold it for 25 right? Okay. Okay, good. So now I can go ahead and I can make up my income statement. Wait, wait, wait. So if you did prepaid insurance for two years, and it went up for one year, and then you'd have one year. That's right. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to have what one uh, one of one of the two years, so 1,200 is gone. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to debit my insurance expense for insurance expense for 1,200, and I'm going to credit my uh, prepaid for 12. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's make up our income statement. And we'll put our income statement, I guess, right here. Any, uh, any revenues? Revenues were zero. Good. Any expenses? Expenses were what? The insurance expense of 1200 So I had an operating loss. And my operating loss is 1200 right? Okay. Any other items? 
Any non-operating items? And I'm forgetting about the interest on that. Don't worry about the interest on that, okay? Any non-operating items? Any non-operating items? Any non-operating items? What? Huh? The gain on the sale of equipment. Good. I had a gain there on the sale of equipment, didn't I? That's non-operating because that's not my normal course of business. So it's $500 gain. So my net income is what? Nine in net income is minus 700. Like that. Okay. So I've got a loss of 700, right? Okay. And so what happens? Now when I prepare my statement of cash flows, my what? My net income is... negative 700 I start to analyze my current items which are what accounts receivable accounts payable nothing happened right but I'm sitting here and I'm looking and I do have this what prepaid insurance account is that a current item and the prepaid insurance account did what it went up by 24 but then it came down by what by 1200 didn't it so it increased 1200 didn't it and if I and if an account payable in uh, a prepaid increased 1200 that means what that means that on a net basis it did what it used up 1200 cash but didn't provide any income did it on a net basis okay and so what am I gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to subtract that increase in the prepaid subtract that 1200 that's the net isn't it up 24 so it would have used 2400 cash and not affecting net income but then what 1200 of that did affect net income right so it's just the net increase 1200 any other operating items that use cash the what inventory increase used three thousand dollars cash didn't it but yet it didn't affect net income at all, right? Okay, so since it did what? Since it used cash but didn't affect net income, I have to subtract it, don't I? Okay. Nothing happened with any liabilities, right? There were no liabilities involved here at all. And so I'm going to go ahead and report cash. Provided by ops, and I guess this is actually used by ops, is what? 7 minus 12 is what? 19 minus 3 is a negative 4,900. Okay. And then I have to, and this would be going down, guys, but I've shouldn't have started this thing where I did. It was stupid to start it down to the bottom. Then I have investing activity. Oh. We're not dealing with interest. Yeah, I don't want people's head to explode here. Okay, their, their heads are about ready to go. And if I add interest to that, we're done. Because statement of cash flows stupidly puts interest in the operating section of the state statement of cash flows when it should put it in the um, investing and financing sections, but it doesn't. It's stupid. And so we don't have time for all that stupidity. Statement of cash flows 700. 
increase in prepaid. Increase in prepaid is how much? Twelve hundred. Increase in inventory is three thousand. Huh? Negative 3,000. Okay, so I'm just rewriting that up here since it's not fitting properly down here. What else? Did I have a second year of depreciation on this equipment? Right? So I have depreciation. Did depreciation use any cash? Does depreciation use any cash? Okay, so the depreciation would have been what? $1,000 that I would have added back. So my uh, net income is actually what? Since I should have shown the uh, the depreciation expense here, it should have been what? Seven, 1700 of expenses minus the 1200 This would have been what? Operating. If I take another 500 there's an operating loss here of what? 1000 I mean, there's operating uh, operating income. Let's see, expenses 1,700, operating loss. I put the depreciation. Now I'm really screwed up. Revenue is zero. Expenses are 17. So that gives me operating loss of what? 1,700. Right, I had the 1,200 of expenses before, and I debit depreciation expense. For $500, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, for a thousand, thank you. Okay, and I credit accumulated depreciation for what? For a thousand, so my depreciation is a thousand. So that means that my operating expenses are what? Twenty-two hundred. Thank you. Negative twenty-two hundred. That's what. That's the insurance expense. That's the depreciation expense, right? So my operating expenses are negative 2,200. Write that in here. And then I had the gain on the sale of equipment. Gain on the sale of equipment was 500, wasn't it? So the gain on the sale of equipment is 500. I don't know why I erased that before. What? Oh, yeah, that's right. When I sold the equipment... Oh, that's why I didn't need to take depreciation, because I said I sold it at the very beginning of the year, didn't I? So if I sold it at the very beginning of the year, I'm confusing myself here. If I sold it at the very beginning of the year, I wouldn't have taken any depreciation in year two, right? So let me go back to that. That's easier. So that puts it back to what, 1,200? That puts it back to... 1200 is my expense, huh? No depreciation because I sold it on January 1st. If you sell the asset January 1st, there's no depreciation. Yeah. Right. I sold it so you don't depreciate it. If you sell it at the beginning of the year, you don't depreciate it, right? So just forget about the depreciation. Operating expense is what? 
1,200 loss, and then I have the gain of 500. So we're back where we were, right? Before I went down the road of depreciation that I had intentionally skipped, and then I brought myself back to it. So we're back to what? 700 net income, right? Okay. The net income is 700 loss. I do what? I subtract out the increase in my prepaid. I spent 2,400, but I did take an expense of 12 on that, didn't I? So net net, there was 1,200 that decreased my cash that did not affect my net income at all, right? Okay. Okay, good. Then I go ahead and I bought this uh, inventory. And what happened here? I used cash and it didn't generate any income to buy that inventory, right? And so I go ahead and I subtract that increase in my inventory. I don't need to worry about depreciation. Let me erase that. I got rid of that problem. I'm not going to worry about interest on this loan. Okay. And so I've gone through and I've considered now my operating items, haven't I? So cash used by operations uh, is this 4900 right? But I'm still not ready for that. Come on, John. I still have to deal with this gain. I took what? I took a $500 gain here, didn't I? But how much cash came in? I took a $500 gain. Meanwhile, $2,500 cash came in, didn't it? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that gain on the sale of equipment. I'm going to subtract that 500 because that's not a cash that was provided by operations. This is going to be a sale of equipment that I invested in, isn't it? And so I back out that what? I back out that gain of 500. So now, finally, the cash provided by operations. Now that cash provided by operations is sitting here at what, uh, 5400 Okay, good. Now in my investing section, I sold something I had invested in before, didn't I? I sold that equipment. And when I purchased it, I showed it coming out of the investing section. And now that I'm buying it back, I'm going to show it. Uh, now that I'm selling it, I should say, I'm going to show it what? Coming into the investing section. How much cash came in? 2500 bucks came in, didn't it? 2500 came into the investing section. I don't know why Microsoft thinks it, that anything other than a deliberate press on an arrow should advance these slides. But anyway, we're sitting here and what? We're going to go ahead and we're increasing 2,500. Uh, uh, we had the investing section. We have what? Sale of equipment. I'm just going to make this up my whole investing section. Put sale of equipment. And the sale of equipment was what? Was for $2,500 cash? So I add that in, $2,500. Did I have any financing? Financing, there was nothing, right? So I'll just put financing as zero. And so my cash decrease for the period is what? I'm down 5,400 plus 2,500 gives me what? 2,900. Okay. And when you look at that, we used up what? 
if you analyze cash for a second, I'll just do that in red. We had cash that we used of 3,000, didn't we? And then we had cash that we used of 2,400. Then we had cash that came in of what, 2,500? Huh? Cash in 2,500 came in. So does that give me the $2,900 change? Cash change 2,900 for the period. Okay. And what this statement of cash flows now, we're all the way to four years on the statement of cash flow now, aren't we? And by year four, we're seeing, hey, still net income is zero. But what? You had some cash that got used up by these current assets that you bought. You're making an adjustment, backing out the gain on the sale of equipment here so that we're showing cash provided by operations because selling equipment is not a normal operation, right? And so what do I do? Even though I back out the gain here, I put in the entire proceeds from the sale down here, don't I? And so we can see that, okay, you sold some equipment and that generated some cash, right? Okay. Question? Yeah. Uh, you said the 3,000 minus how many part of the red? Huh? 3,000 minus 2,400. 3,000 minus 24 plus 25 should be what? 3,000 minus 2,400 plus 2,500. Yeah, minus 23 uh, plus what? 3,000, is it minus 24 or plus 24? Minus 24 plus 500 gives me 2,900 yeah. net loss, decrease in cash. Take out a calculator and put a negative 3,000 in there. And then subtract 2,400 more and then add back 2,500 and see if you get a negative 2,900. There seems to be some doubt, so let's just go ahead and verify the calculation. Huh? Like who? Who is acting like Clayton? What is this, guys? I don't understand what's happening right now. I got a conversation going on over here. I've got people calling out hi over there. I've got a call out to Clay Thompson over there. What is happening right now? Where are we? I'm kind of feeling like you guys have just gone off on some sort of tangent. Sir, are we on 2,900 now? A negative 2,900? Have we confirmed that calculation? Can I please see your calculator? Guys, stop confusing each other. Okay. <laughs> Guys, stop it. Forget everything you said to each other. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, what's happening? We're sitting here and we have what? We have a decrease of 2900 in cash. And all we're reporting is what? We had a negative net income of? 700 and we basically have to see what the impact on cash of that was right we sat there and we took an expense for 12 but what we actually used 2400 of cash didn't we so what happens we have to subtract 1200 from that right right we showed already 1200 as an expense that's how we ended up with that negative 700 here's a 1200 expense 1200 but we actually used 1200 more cash didn't we we used 2,400 cash when we bought this insurance policy, didn't we? Right? We bought the insurance policy. Just look at this. We bought the insurance policy for 2,400, didn't we? We reported only 1,200 of that as an expense, didn't we? Only 1,200 was an expense. Meanwhile, how much cash did we use? 
2400 so my prepaid came up 1200 didn't it and so because my prepaid came up 1200 that's telling me I used 1200 cash that has not been reported as an expense it's still sitting on the balance sheet isn't it right there's 1200 that is still sitting on the balance sheet for this purchase of this insurance I credited cash for $2,400 and I debited prepaid insurance 2400 didn't I? Then I went ahead and I debited what? Insurance expense for 12, credited prepaid insurance for 12. So there's still $1,200 of this prepaid insurance sitting on the balance sheet, right? Me, it's not on the income statement. It didn't add to the $700 loss here, right? Didn't in, it contribute to the $700 loss. So my cash came down 1200 So I have to subtract that from cash because I'm trying to get cash, in this case, used by operations, right? Then I bought some inventory. I paid what? I paid $3,000 for inventory, and I haven't taken any expense on that at all, have I? Or any cost of goods sold on that at all because I haven't sold any of that inventory. So my inventory did what? It increased. It used up cash. It's still sitting on the balance sheet. So I have to subtract it because I'm trying to get to cash provided by operations, right? So I have to subtract that out. Then what? Then I'm sitting here and I have this gain of 500. I don't want to report that gain up there in the operating section because that's not how much cash I got out of this deal. I got how much? 2,500. So what do I do? I subtract out the impact there and I take that entire 2,500 I report it down here in the investing section, don't I? And it's not magic. It ties back to the change in cash for the period, doesn't it? Okay. Okay, so when you look at how to remember all of this mess, there's an easy way to do it. Okay, so now we're to the point here where everything's going to come together in terms of how we attack this on the questions that we're going to see on the quiz in a little while, and then we're going to see when we look at the midterm. Okay, and I mean the final. And so what happens? We have operating activities. And when you look at the operating activity section, if you want to look like a genius, you can clad yourself in the cloak of genius. Clad. C-L-A-D. Clad. Okay? And clad, the C stands for current items. I'll write it on top of it. The C stands for current items. Didn't we analyze the current items? That says current. C stands for current, didn't we? We looked at that. And we analyzed current assets. And we analyzed current liabilities, didn't we? Didn't we look at both accounts receivable and account payable? So we analyzed current assets, current liabilities. And for the assets, we did the opposite. That says do the opposite. Do the opposite. That says do the opposite. What happens? If it was an asset, if it was accounts receivable and accounts receivable increase, we did what? We subtracted it, didn't we? If it was the inventory, the inventory increase, we subtracted it. When the accounts receivable decreased, we did what? We added it, didn't we? So we did the opposite for the assets, right? For the prepaid, when it increased, we subtracted it, right? Okay. For liabilities, do the same. So what happens? When accounts payable did what? When it increased, we added it to net income, didn't we? When it decreased, we subtracted it from net income. We did the same, right? Okay, so you're going to always have to analyze current items. And when you analyze current items, if it's an asset, you do what, everybody? Do the opposite. If it is a liability, you what? Do the same, right? Well, now that's easy. We have this mnemonic clad. We know we have to analyze the current items for assets. Do the opposite for liabilities, what? Do the same, right? 
Then what? Then we dealt with that loss. We dealt with the loss. Remember the loss? But we also had losses and what? Gains. And the answer there is for losses now, and I just, I don't know, I don't want to write it over and under investing activities. For losses now, losses, if it's a, if it's a loss, you're going to add it. If it's a gain, you should do what? You should subtract it, right? Okay. So you have what? You have the mnemonic clad, current items, assets, do the opposite, liabilities, do the same, losses and gains. The L just helps you remember losses, and then you have to remember what? Gains. If it's a loss, you do what? Add it. If it's a gain, you subtract it because, like we saw, we're going to account for that down in the uh, 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 investing section, aren't we? It's non-operating, so I want to get it into operate out of operating and get it down into into investing, right? And I want to get the whole proceeds down there in investing, right? Not just this accounting gain or loss, because I'm trying to get to cash, right? So I want to see the cash. So I'm going to put the whole amount of cash down in the investing section, right? Okay. So we've got current items. If it's assets, do the opposite. Liabilities. Do the same. We have losses, the L in clad and gains. Good. If it's a loss, you're going to add it. A gain, you're going to subtract it. Okay. The A in cloud stands for amortization, which you won't have to deal with any amortization of discounts or anything. So that's good. If we were taking the CPA exam right now, I'd have to explain that to you, but we're not. And so I'm not going to worry about amortization of premiums and discounts here. We don't have to worry about that. The D stands for depreciation. And depreciation is the easiest thing we talked about. That is what? Add the depreciation because it doesn't use cash, right? Okay. So. The operating section, the statement of cash flows, that's the tougher section. And you now have everything you need to know about it. It's going to be clad. You're going to clad yourself in the cloak of genius. Current items, if it's an asset, do the opposite. If it's a liability, what? Do the same. Good. Gains and losses, the L, losses and gains, the L and clad. If it's a loss, add it. If it's a gain, what? Subtract it. Depreciation is the easiest thing in the world. You always add it, right? Okay, we got the operating section done. That's all you need to know for the operating section. You get to what? You get to the investing section, and I want you to think of an investment department in a company. An investment department in a company, their whole job, the investment manager would be to do what? Make investments, right? And so what are they going to do? They're going to invest in equipment, aren't they? They may decide to invest in another company's stock. They'll go buy it. A stock in another company, they'll make an investment in them, right? That company then will what? Will uh, make investment in another company's bonds, let's say, right? But anytime you are doing what? Making some investment, that goes in your investing department, that goes in the investing section, right? Financing is your what? Financing department. And what do you tell your financing department to do? Get you cash. Very good. Get you cash. So what are they going to do? They're going to issue stock. They're going to issue stock, aren't they? They'll issue stock. They will do what? They will pay dividends on that stock, won't they? They could have a note payable. They could sign a note to get us the financing. We saw the note payable was in the financing section, wasn't it? They could issue bonds, couldn't they? Okay. They get they well if they give a loan that's investing if they what borrow money that is going to be in the financing section okay with me so far okay we're gonna look at the problems here in a couple seconds um, actually I'm gonna show you a couple more slides and then we're gonna look at the problems in a couple seconds because we got to get to that stupid midterm review okay our final review but listen listen interest I ignored okay and it's not on the exam 
interest is in the operating section, which is the stupidest thing in the world. Okay, FASB is nuts for having the interest in the um, in the um, in the operating section because what on the income statement it's a non-operating item, isn't it? But what in the um, statement of cash flows they put it up in operating activity, and the reason they do is because they have decided to allow this indirect method where we start with net income. And since interest, expense, and revenue affects net income, we are burdened with what? Putting it up in the operating section so that we can reconcile to net income. Otherwise, we could never reconcile to net income because it affects net income. Okay. Meanwhile, if we have dividend income, that goes up. The dividend income. We make an investment in stock. Someone pays us a dividend. That goes into the operating section. Meanwhile, it's an income that's generated from our investing activity, isn't it? But we could never reconcile to net income to cash provided by operations if we didn't have, uh, uh, if we didn't include dividends up in the operating section. If we pay a dividend, that goes in the financing section because payment of a dividend doesn't affect net income, so they can put it neatly down there in the financing section. So we've got some problems with the way FASB has contemplated a statement of cash flows. That's why I have ignored interest on this because I didn't want everyone's head to explode. See, there they all went based on what I just said. Okay, but since you asked, I'm explaining. Okay, what happens with that? We're not going to have to worry about interest and dividends. Okay, all right, so let's just go ahead and let's take a look um, at the um, nature of things that go in to the statement of cash flows. And um, I think we can really, at this point, guys, skip all the way over to this let's do it problem. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so issued 100,000 shares of $5 par common stock for $800,000 cash. Investing, financing, or operating? Anybody other than just one person? This is financing, right? Because we issued our own stock, right? This is financing. Okay, borrowed money. That's financing, good. Purchase two semi-trailer trucks. That's investing. Good. Paid employees. That's going to be operating. Good. Collected cash for service performed. That's going to be an operating. Good. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, now, let's just go ahead and look at this indirect method versus the direct method. We only talk about the indirect method here because look at how many people use the indirect method. Even though it is a stupid method, everybody uses it. FASB would prefer that you use the direct method, but everybody uses indirect. And the reason everybody uses indirect is because if we use the direct method, we have to call out how much cash we paid to our suppliers, how much cash we received from our customers. That information is something that our competitors could use against us. And so companies don't like to use the direct method. They use the indirect method but as a result of the indirect method we are stuck with all this bizarre stuff like treating interest as operate cash provided by operating okay so there's some problems there but uh, most people use the indirect method most companies okay all right just to see how this statement of cash flows look is this our net income number is this our net income number okay and so what do we do we sit here and just like we did in a sloppy manner, mind you, we sit here and we analyze the what? The balance sheet and we're going through and looking to see how all the different things change for the period, aren't we? We do it for our assets. We do it for our liabilities, don't we? And then they give us some additional information like what the depreciation expense was, et cetera. And they sold some equipment and uh, the equipment had a cost of 8,000, accumulation depreciation of 1,000, so had a book value of 7,000. We sold it for how much? 4,000, so there's a $4,000 loss there, right? So they're giving me some more information, okay? And so when we look at the statement of cash flows, um, on our income statement, come back. Do you see our depreciation expense of 9,000? I mean, that's a give me on the test when we ask you that. You know you add back the depreciation, don't they? 
loss on the disposal of equipment. I guess it was a, what I say, $4,000 loss? I must have miscalculated that. The equipment had a book value of seven, and we sold it for what? We sold it for four. That's a $3,000 loss. Is that what they said over there? Yeah, $3,000 loss we're adding back. Okay, then we start doing what? CLAD, going through our, that was the D in CLAD, but we start going through our current items, account receivable, 10,000 add because the accounts receivable did what? Accounts receivable decreased 10,000, so we do what? We add it, don't we? Our inventory increased for 5,000. Where's my inventory? My inventory increased for 5,000, so what do we do? It's an asset, so we subtract it my what my payables and don't worry you can think of tax payable as a liability as well my accounts payable my accounts payable must have done what if I added it it must have gone up 16,000 because I do the same for my liabilities don't I so I come back and I look at my accounts payable did it go up where's my accounts payable it increased 16,000 right okay Question? No? Okay, let's go ahead then and let's quickly look at some quiz questions. Let's quickly take a break and see if we can't get a good 45 minutes in or so of going through the uh, final. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and keep discarding this. And I am going to go to some questions. <clears throat> okay. And the statement of cash flows is a financial statement that reports the cash inflows. And outflows for the period, right? And report by operating, investing, and financing, don't we? Okay. The primary purpose of the statement of cash flows is to provide information about cash receipts and payments during the period, doesn't it? Okay. By the way, these questions are all stupid, but uh, well, that that this one is dumb. This last one's dumb. I guess. But uh, whatever. Financing activities include what? Include issuing debt, right? Investing activities include collecting cash on a loan made. We made the loan, we invested, but then what? Then we're going to collect that money back, aren't we? That's all investing. Okay, cash receipts from interest and dividends are stupidly in the operating activity section. I don't think they asked that anywhere on the test. We'll confirm that later. Okay, but... Uh, I guess I decided to put that there. Okay, this is a good exercise. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a look at these. And we say, which of the following adjustments to convert net income to cash provided by operations is correct? If accounts receivable increase, should we add it to net income? If accounts receivable increase, should we add it to net income? We should subtract it, shouldn't we? Okay, so that's not right. If prepaid expenses increase, should we add them? Add it? Add the increase to net income. Is prepaid expense um, is prepaid expense is a what? Well, it's not really an asset. They say it's a what? I see what they're doing. They're saying it is a uh, prepaid expense is an expense, right? If prepaid expense is increased, then that means that my what? My prepaid insurance must have done what? Must have decrease so if my prepaid insurance decreased I'm going to do what I'm going to increase my do the opposite right so for that one it's okay how about what should I um, oh I see the problem um, add to net income deduct deduct from net income what the decrease what's going on here
Prepaid expenses increase. I think this might be a typo on this problem. Prepaid expenses increase. That means I did what? I debited my... I think they mean the what? Asset here. Because otherwise this question doesn't work. They mean the asset here, don't they? They shouldn't call it prepaid expenses. They should just call it prepaids, right? Not expenses. Because when they say expenses, I think they're thinking the income statement account. They mean the balance sheet account, don't they? And so if my prepaid asset does what? My prepaid asset is going to um, increase. I don't add that to net income. I do what? Subtract that from net income, right? Okay. Okay, good. Inventory decreases. I should do what? I should decrease that, subtract that from net income, and do what? I should increase um, for the deduction from net income, right? If it increases, I would do what? Subtract it from net income. If it decreases, I will do what? Add it to net income. If I buy inventory, I deduct that from net income. If I do what? If my inventory decreases, I add that to net income. Current asset. Taxes payable, a payable. If the payable decreases, I should do what? I should, I should not add that to net income. I should do what? Decrease it from net income. So that one's not right. Okay, so C is the only one that followed our rule. Okay. Remind me never to talk about that question again. Okay, let's look at something more like what you're going to see on your uh, exam. So accounts receivable rising from the sale of customers amounted to 86000 and 77000 at the beginning of the year and end of the year respectively. So let's just look at that. We were at 86000 and we've come down to what? 77,000. So what's the change here? We have a $9,000 change, a $9,000 decrease, don't we? Okay. Now they come in and they tell me that my net income was what? 290,000 and they want me to show cash provided by operating activities. Well, since my accounts receivable decreased, I'm going to do what? I'm going to add it. So I would take the 290,000, add what? Add the 9,000 to that. That gives me the 299,000. Is that the answer? Okay. Okay, good. Um, which of the following transactions would not be classified as financing? Issuance of stock is financing. Payment of a dividend is financing. Issuance of bond is financing. Purchase of a long-term hello. Investment in a bond is investing activities, right? Financing activities involve lending money to other entities. No, it's borrowing money. Cash receipts from the sale of goods and services, that's operating. Acquiring and disposing of long-lived assets, that's all in the investing section. Long-term liability and stockholder equity items is the financing, right? Okay. Let's do one more, and then we're going to take the break. Okay. Bush Company reported net income of 60000 and accounts receivable decreased by 8,000. What do you want to do with that if it decreased 8,000? Good, I add it. It's an asset. I do the opposite, don't I? Okay, accounts payable increased by 4,000. What do you want to do with that? I add it. It's a liability. I do the same. Depreciation expense of 5,000. What do you want me to do with that? I add back the depreciation, don't I? Because it didn't use cash. And so what do we get here? Uh, 77,000. Okay. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break so that we can come back and uh, spend some time looking at that final exam, okay? And go through. I guess as many questions as we can stand on that, okay? 
so um, we'll take about 10 minutes we'll come back and we'll go through those questions